Thank you everyone for hopping on the line. Um, we are very excited to have you all on and to share more information about the Transit Tech Lab and the upcoming challenges. Um, my name is Stacey Matlin. I'm the director of the Transit Tech Lab, which is a program enabling transit agencies to access leading mobility technologies to make New York City the global hub in transportation. Um, the lab hosts annual challenges to help transit agencies find the most innovative solutions uh, to their most pressing challenges. And this year we have two open challenges that we'll be discussing. Um, during this info session, we'll provide an overview of the Transit Tech Lab, provide more information about the two open challenges to guide your applications, hear from transit agency representatives themselves who will provide more context about the challenges and then have time for Q&A. Um, so just a note, um, we've, uh, Enable the, the chat function for a question and answer. You will only be able to chat to um, the host. So if you have questions throughout this uh, period, please send them to Natalia uh, Quintero um, and she will be directing the questions. And so we will have time at the end for questions and answers. And if we don't get to your questions in this session, we will um, review them and post answers on our website by the end of the week. So um, for a bit of context, the Transit Tech Lab is housed under the Transit Innovation Partnership, uh, which is a broader public-private partnership between the Partnership for New York City, a nonprofit dedicating resources to advance opportunity and innovation in New York, and the MTA, which is uh, North America's largest transit agency. And since 2018, the MTA has used the Transit Tech Lab as a tool to work with the most innovative companies in an expedited fashion. And while the program started with the MT and the MT has been leading the way, uh, the rest of the region has followed. And we now have all of the leading transit agencies in the New York Metro region participating as part of the Transit Tech Lab. So we have the MTA, we have New Jersey Transit, we have New York City Department of Transportation, and we have the Port Authority for New York and New Jersey. Um, so each of these agencies have selected two key challenge areas which they are seeking innovative solutions to solve around public transit recovery and sustainability. And so through the Transit Tech Lab, agencies can ask broad questions and are seeking innovative non-prescriptive solutions to solve these broad questions. Um, and this year, the two challenges around uh, public transit recovery and sustainability. So the question around public transit recovery is, how can we support the recovery of public transit and deliver service that gets customers back? And then the question around sustainability is, how can we build a more climate resilient transportation system and increase energy efficiency of fleets and facilities? So who should apply? Um, we found that growth stage startups, uh, so those who have already found product market fit or generating revenue, have customers in either other market segments or are working with other transit agencies um, are the most successful. And here on this slide, you will see examples of use cases of technologies uh, that the transit agencies themselves have come up with uh, around what is um, what they're looking for uh, in the, the challenges. However, please do note that this is not an all-encompassing list and we are not seeking a prescriptive solution. Uh, we do want innovators to come to us and tell us what solutions may apply to these broad questions that we're asking. Um, so if you have a solution that can apply to one of uh, these questions, very broadly speaking, and uh, you're eligible to apply, please do apply. And so getting a little deeper into these eligibility requirements, so as mentioned, growth stage companies are encouraged to apply. Um, the solution should address the challenge. So in the application, you should be able to clearly state how you are addressing the challenge proposed. Um, you should have already deployed to other customers and also independently owned and operated. So subsidiaries of larger companies are not eligible to apply. And then lastly, um, you must be legally uh, registered with New York Department of State by the time uh, the applications are closed. Um, so we've had a couple of questions. Yes, international companies can apply to the Transit Tech Lab, but we just request that you are registered to do business in New York State. So the evaluation criteria, um, both public and private sector evaluators will be reviewing all applications 
and will all equally apply the same criteria to each application. And what they will be reviewing is impact product team and value. So impact, you know, is the solution viable? Will it have a positive impact on performance and customer experience? Product is, uh, can you present metrics to show product market fit? and ideally demonstrate uh, examples of paying customers who have illustrated product market fit. Team, is the team qualified? Do you have enough resources to participate in the Transit Tech Lab and you have no conflicts of interest? Um, and then one thing I will note on this last point with team, availability to participate in person in New York City throughout the program. So with COVID, uh, we are a little bit more flexible this year in terms of the in-person requirement. Um, obviously, in-person meetings will uh, be pending COVID conditions, and so we're, we're a little bit more flexible, but uh, we do encourage and request that startups will at least attend key meetings in person. So that, that first uh, kickoff meeting, once you get into the proof of concept, any final presentations, and then also during the pilot uh, key meetings, we are requesting uh, companies. And then lastly, value. Uh, are you presenting some new innovation that can provide value to the MTA that can help improve efficiency in some way, shape, or form? So benefits. Broadly speaking, we have heard from uh, some of our alumni who are entrepreneurs that they would not have engaged with the public sector without the Transit Tech Lab. Um, we've heard that, you know, as a startup, it can be particularly challenging uh, to dedicate limited resources to win work with public agencies is typically there are long sales cycles and this process can be pretty time and resource intensive. Um, and, and so the Transit Tech Lab was really created specifically for, uh, for startups and it was to help startups make the process as easy as possible to work and provide innovative solutions for the most pressing transit challenges at public sector agencies. Um, so we have a really simple application uh, we work through the application platform F6S, which if you are a startup and if you have applied to accelerators, startup accelerators in the past, you've probably used this platform. Um, and then every step of the process, we work to make sure that you can gain access, exposure, and get feedback uh, from the regional transit system, all different types of um, staff and leaders in uh, their agencies to get feedback on how your product can uh, be successful. And then once you get into the eight week proof of concept period, uh, you have a customized plan to evaluate technical integration. And so this includes a kickoff meeting where you establish expectations, you get to tour respective operational centers, um, you can shadow day to day tasks if, uh, if it's applicable um, to understand product use, you'll have weekly check ins with uh, constant open communication and feedback. Uh, and then we also facilitate meetings with IT security, uh, legal and procurement teams, so you understand what it's like to really work within transit agencies. And then at the end, you will present your findings to uh, leadership at, across all of the agencies. And if uh, the agency that you are working with likes what they see, uh, they can then select you to do a year-long pilot to continue to test your technology. And then with that year-long pilot, while this is an unpaid opportunity, we do work with NYSERDA, which is the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority. Um, and in the past, they have provided grant funding for pilots that can reduce energy use and greenhouse gas emissions. So now I know you're thinking, oh, wow, this is such a great opportunity. You know, how can I apply? What's the next steps? Well, luckily, uh, it's very simple, and I'm about to show you. Uh, you go to our website, which is transitinnovation.org. Um, you can go to the Transit Tech Lab tab, scroll down, and you can see these two open challenges. You can click on the relevant challenge. And real quick, um, before I go into this, I do want to just note that at the bottom of our website, we have FAQs. And this is a link to the FAQ. So if, as mentioned, if uh, we don't get a chance to answer your question, uh, we will be posting all answers to all questions here. Uh, at the end, uh, by the end of the week. And then also our terms and conditions are right here as well. So by applying, you are agreeing to our terms and conditions. Going back up, sorry, I hope this isn't making anyone dizzy. 
All right. So let's say um, I'm a startup and I want to learn more about the recovery challenge. You go to the website, you see our page. This is the broad question that um, I would need to be answering as part of my application. How can we support recovery of public transit and deliver service that gets customers back? Um, here, there's just more information um, about the challenge. Here's the link to apply. Before I click this, I just want to note that there's more information here. We do have the timeline and also resources. So this is all publicly available resources you can use to help guide your application. And so if you want to apply, you click this link. It takes you directly to the F6S platform. And this is the what the application page looks like. Uh, if you already have a page, uh, this will be automatically filled. If not, you'll have to create a page for your company. And then this is the application. Um, it's pretty short. It should take about 30 minutes total. And one thing to note, uh, you, we do ask you to choose which challenge you are applying to. You can apply to both challenges, but we ask you to uh, submit separate applications for each challenge. All right, now going back. So a few uh, important dates to keep in mind. Applications are open until March 25th. Um, but we encourage you to start your applications as soon as possible. So don't wait to the last day to apply. Um, and then after this, we have public and private sector evaluators who will be reviewing each application with the eligibility criteria outlined before. Um, and then uh, based off those uh, evaluations, there will be semi-finalists who will be selected to participate in pitch presentations. And that will happen sometime between April 20th and April 21st. Uh, if you're selected, you will get a 30 minute block where you will provide a 10 to 15 minute presentation. And then there will be around five to 10 minutes for questions and answers afterwards for evaluators to ask questions. And then after, if the evaluators like what they see, um, you'll be invited to the demo day, which uh, is more of a show and tell with your technology. This is open to a wider audience. So there's a wide range of transit agency staff are invited to learn more about your project. Um, and it's done again virtually through 30 minute time slots throughout the day. And then lastly, evaluators will uh, deliberate and select proof of concept winners. And the proof of concept begins on May 9th. After completing the eight week proof of concept, agencies will select winners to participate in a year long pilot. And the pilot begins September 13th. All right, so you've heard enough from me now. Um, I am happy and honored to be joined by two incredible partners from the MTA and Port Authority. We have Sunil Nair, who is the Chief Officer of Bus Technology from the MTA, and we have Kate Lawrence Shetty, Net Zero Lead, Office of Sustainability from Port Authority. So I am going to uh, unmute and hand this over, starting with Sunil. Well, uh, thank you, Stacy and Natalia. Uh, you can hear me right, right? Okay, great. Uh, um, and welcome to everybody. My name is Sunil Nair. I work uh, at the MTA in the Department of Buses. And uh, currently, I'm the program manager for the zero emissions uh, fleet uh, transformation project here at the MTA. I'll uh, quickly talk about the sustainability piece of the challenge. Uh, I'll talk about uh, how the zero emissions fleet deployment is a strategy to reducing our uh, existing carbon footprint what our goals are with respect to the full fleet uh, bus transformation and uh, the challenges that are really specific to this group, the transit technology uh, lab group. Uh, next slide, please. Great. So just as context, uh, at this point, uh, you know, uh, uh, with respect to greenhouse gas avoidance itself, just by the MTA being here, uh, we avoid approximately 19 million metric tons of greenhouse gases. And the 19 million metric tons are decided on the basis of you know, avoided uh, auto trips or private uh, trips, uh, congestion relief as a result of uh, buses and subways being here and railroads being here, uh, better fuel efficiency because you, know, you have reduced uh, congestion as a result of, again, the buses and, uh, and the subways being here. And of course, uh, the efficient uh, urban land use patterns that are uh, part of the uh, you know, growing urban development as part of the MTA. Uh, that said, uh, you know, given the avoidance part, uh, what are we emitting? Well, uh, we are emitting approximately a little less than 2 million metric tons of uh, carbon uh, through our operations. And uh, the 2 million metric tons are really the 
tailpipe emissions from our existing vehicles, both uh, revenue as well as non-revenue. Uh, the fuel used for the generation of traction power, so that generates carbon. The fuel used at maintenance yards, bus depots, uh, 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 train yards, and things like that. And of course, offices and other stationary uh, sources. So they generate approximately 1.94 million metric tons. So if you look at our own emissions, the MTA's annual avoidance of uh, carbon itself is in the region of 17 million metric tons. So you might think, okay, how does this tie into what, what uh, the lead is? And uh, if you can go to the next slide, Stacy, I can, uh... yeah. So the lead is that, uh, you know, if we get to 100% uh, zero emissions MTA bus fleet, we can further reduce the greenhouse gas emissions by another 25%. Now, you know, we have a fleet size of approximately 5,800 buses, uh, and, and the buses, um, the, the, the diesel use of buses contributes to about 23 pounds of carbon dioxide per gallon of diesel. And the typical bus uses about 9,000 gallons of diesel annually, which if you compute and convert the pounds to tons, US, uh, US metric tons, you get to about 450,000 tons of carbon dioxide uh, avoided annually if you go to a full 100% zero emissions uh, MTA fleet. And that's what we have you know, essentially embarked upon. And that's where you know, the relevance of this particular challenge would uh, come through. Next slide, please. Okay. Um, and you know, I wanna say the MTA is at this point completely committed to ensuring that we get to a 100% zero emissions fleet by our uh, publicly announced deadline of 2040. Uh, we have 15 zero emission buses in the fleet today. They've been running uh, since January, 2020. It's been a really productive uh, experience, uh, both from a manufacturer perspective, the bus uh, manufacturer perspective, as well as from the MTA perspective, both of us are learning uh, throughout the process. And uh, I wanna say, you know, we are really well equipped to expand on this. Uh, the board, the MTA board in November announced a further award of 60 additional zero emission buses. Uh, they're supposed to start to come to the property Q3 of this year, the first set of buses, and then production set of buses would come Q2 of next year. Uh, they would be distributed across uh, five uh, depots, across five boroughs. Uh, continuing forward, the MTA works in terms of uh, uh, capital plans, five-year capital plans, and the current capital plan, which is the 2020 to 2020 Four capital plan calls for an expansion of up to 500 zero emission buses. Uh, these buses would be uh, deployed across approximately eight to 10 uh, locations across uh, all five boroughs. And, uh, uh, and we are currently in the strategy planning slash deployment uh, strategy phase of this uh, program. Of course, uh, you know, expanding to such a program um, involves investing heavily with uh, in-house resources, uh, experts like you, uh, and of course, our regional partners uh, uh, in the tri-state area and uh, NYPA, New York Power Authority, NYSERDA, the uh, New York State Energy Research uh, uh, Group, uh, uh, our local ut utility Con Ed, all of this come to mind with respect to regional partners. And of course, uh, you know, startup companies like you come to mind. So this is where we need the expertise in terms of our uh, transformation itself. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so that brings us to the challenges that are relevant to this particular group. Um, while, you know, I've divided up the challenges into sort of aspirational as opposed to what we need right now. And I wanna say the first challenge is what we need right away. And the second one is uh, more aspirational. And aspirational can range from, you know, how do we improve uh, bus ranges to how do we improve battery chemistry so that they store more energy to other uh, really large scale aspirations that we have as, a, as an industry. But with this specific group, uh, what, what I wanted to say is we are looking for solutions and we are looking at developers who can come on board and, and start to demonstrate to us uh, smart charging solutions that essentially integrate you know, the four sort of factors that contribute to uh, uh, effective charging for a electric vehicle which is really you know, the health uh, data that comes off buses, which is really the bus telematics data, uh, integration to the schedule slash uh, fleet data, which is uh, your HASTAS type data that comes from scheduling software, integration to existing public and or private 
uh, utility uh, and energy partners in terms of uh, demand charges, in terms of consumption patterns, in terms of consumption charges and things like that. And of course, uh, the integration to electric vehicle charger data itself, because there is a lot of data that goes back and forth between the bus that comes for charging and the charger itself. Uh, so, so an effective integration between these four pieces would deliver a, a smart charging solution to the MTA uh, that would not only reduce charging costs as we start to expand the fleet, but would also ensure that we charge efficiently. You know, you don't charge at those times where your demand charges are highest and things like that, or you don't charge at those times where you know you may be asked to do a a, a, a load curtailment uh, across the depot. So uh, we're looking for solutions that integrate these four factors and bring a integrated smart charging solution uh, to the MTA. There are solutions out there, but we haven't seen something that effectively integrates all four uh, seamlessly. The second challenge is more aspirational. And uh, this is where I was uh, kind of uh, uh, inspired by the interface that a electric vehicle like Tesla has. You know, their, their uh, human machine interface or the, operate, or the driver machine interface is very different from your normal uh, diesel or, or a gasoline uh, uh, car or a truck, right? And, uh, and the challenge here is for design firms to come on board and potentially demonstrate to us uh, new ways by which you can change the bus operator uh, interface or the bus operator dashboard that just shows you the zero emission relevant parameters uh, in a, in a non-cluttered manner. You know, right now you have dials and you have uh, a, a, a whole lot of things that the operator is uh, looking at uh, on, a, on a regular uh, uh, diesel powered vehicle. But I suspect that a lot of that is going to change uh, as we start to expand into the zero emissions uh, space. And uh, this challenge is really for design designers to come on board and show us what they can with respect to a future zero emissions uh, uh, operator interface. Um, there are other aspirational challenges, but I think these are kind of the more relevant ones to this particular group, uh, especially the first one. I really want to stress on the first one because we are uh, actively looking for a solution for that. Um, that's really all I had with respect to the challenges itself. And, uh, you know, at the end of this, I'll wait for questions or uh, comments. Thank you, Stacy and uh, Natalia. Thank you, Sunil. Yep. All right. Now that we've heard from uh, Sunil from MTA, we're going to move on to Port Authority uh, with Kate Lauren Shetty. Um, who's the net zero lead for the Office of Sustainability. So, Kate, the floor is yours. You're, oh, hold on. There you go. Can you? Yes, thank you. Well, Sunil put me to shame. He's had such a excellent slides. I think I just have the one, but um, hopefully I can at least give you all an overview of the Port Authority's operations and what, um, you know what what we're doing in the sustainability field and what we could be um where we could improve and and are looking for innovation so i'm the net zero lead and within the office of sustainability for the port authority of new york and new jersey and um, the office of sustainability works uh throughout the port authority with all of the different um, departments we have a number of operations and facilities uh, within the region so the port authority um has transit, a uh, very explicit transit, which would be the path train that runs between New York and New Jersey. Um, they also run the tunnels that go between the two states, as well as the bridges, um, the major airports in the region, and the ports um, and in the region as well. So um, in addition to the path train, um, other transit elements uh, that the Port Authority works with are the ferries going over the Hudson River between New York and New Jersey, and um, the shuttle buses that run at the airports. Um, and then we also have the air trains that run through the airports. So, um, the Port Authority has been making a lot of progress on sustainability since 2008 when it first um, passed sustainability goals, um, but most recently we really upped our game. So in November of last year, November of 2021, we passed a net zero 
um, goal. So we are now looking to reduce our emissions um, to net zero by 2050. That's across the agency uh, with our partners. And then for our direct operations, um, we're looking to reduce 35% of our greenhouse gas emissions by 2025 and 50% of our emissions um, by 2030. So we're doing a number of different initiatives um, uh, on lots of different fronts in order to get that going. Um, one of them is electrification. So we have committed to electrifying 100% of our light duty fleet by 2030 and 50% of our medium and heavy duty fleet um, by 2035. So um, something to keep in mind is that our heavy and medium duty fleet, um, they can be harder to electrify ones because some of the you know, models um, are not on the, the market yet um, that work for our purposes, but also because a lot of the vehicles that help the different departments, um, you know, that, that work uh, uh, to, to help manage our systems are custom made. And so um, getting them to be electric um, in a cost effective way is quite uh, difficult at this point. Um, so that electrification is happening. We're, we're on track to meeting our first target of 100% um, of our light duty vehicles um, by 2030. We're also you know, looking to uh, provide more um, electric um, opportunities for people to charge if they're customers of the Port Authority. And then um, we, we are looking for additional opportunities, perhaps when it comes to ferries, which are not currently um, electric. Our Port Authority, our PATH trains are electric already, um, um, or, or largely electric, um, so that we have uh, made a lot of progress on, on with a lot of our operations. Um, we also, um, to, regarding the electric charging for customers, we do have a fast charging hub at JFK already in operation. And then regarding our shuttle buses, um, we have, so that's a fairly small fleet compared to the MTA's bus fleet, um, but we do have uh, 36 buses that are already electric and we're getting 20 more in the next uh, year or two. And that will get us to about 100% of our uh, shuttle bus fleet as electric, minus a few that are sort of backup um, if anything goes wrong. We're also making a lot of progress when it comes to energy efficiency in our buildings, um, putting renewables in place. Um, so we're trying to get solar on all of our um, our roofs and our parking lots. That's something that's an ongoing uh, process. And then looking at energy management um, at our buildings and facilities. So that would be um, trying to make best use of when we're using our electricity. And you can find all the information that I went over um, on our on the PATH website. So um, basically it's under environmental initiatives and that includes um, the greenhouse gas emissions that we've been doing since 2006. We have them annually, um, as well as a presentation regarding our new net zero goals, our electrification efforts within our fleet, and then information about also our, our building um, upgrades that we've been making. There's also information on there for resiliency efforts that have been made at our facilities um, and the partners that we're working with. So we try to get as much information as we can publicly available so people know um, what we're working on and the progress we've made so far. Great, thank you, Kate. All right, so um, just, Here's a reminder of the key deadlines and dates that you should uh, keep in mind when you are uh, thinking about applying. Um, and again, thank you all for submitting questions before uh, when you registered. So um, while you're submitting questions to the chat functionality, if you send them to Natalia, she can navigate, but if we don't address them, um, we will answer them and we will post all question and answers on our website within a week. Um, so please do keep a lookout on our, our website for the question and answer section. And also uh, there will be a recording of this uh, webinar on our website afterwards. So don't worry if you had to step out for a little bit. Um, so when reviewing the questions, um, broadly speaking, there was four main categories that people were curious about. So I'll just 
rapid fire, go off and address them. The, the broad categories around the Transit Tech Labs track record, eligibility requirements, solution types, and then scope of work parameters. So starting uh, with the Transit Tech Labs track record for scaling solutions, one was a question, and then also for receiving uh, what has been the success or what has been the process for startups who receive grant funds for pilots. Um, so starting with scaling solutions and the track, uh, the track record of the Transit Tech Lab, so of the 15 companies that had been selected to complete pilots with regional transit agencies, um, five have gone on to deploy technologies in the commercial capacity. And, and then also note that out of those other 10 companies, uh, eight are still in the pilot phase and have yet to be fully evaluated for scaling in a commercial capacity. So we do have a pretty high track record for success. Um, grant funds. So in regards to examples of how startups were able to take advantage of NYSERDA, uh, which is New York State Energy Research and Development Authority funding. Um, so as NYSERDA is a state agency focused on energy research, the application, uh, once you are already a uh, pilot winner, you will submit an application and that application must show how you're somehow reducing greenhouse gas emissions or energy emissions. Um, so again, if a company is selected for that year-long pilot, uh, you can apply for NYSERDA grant funding. And in the past, startups have used NYSERDA grant funding to integrate software tools, to conduct surveys, to train agency staff, to install hardware. Um, <clears throat> each funded project demonstrated how their pro product could reduce energy use or greenhouse gas emissions. And they also outlined clear deliverables to demonstrate how completed work can make transit more efficient and sustainable. Um, so with eligibility, um, a few, <laughs> few key points to note. One, yes, international companies can apply, but must be registered to do business with New York State. And I will note that step-by-step -step instructions on how to register your business with New York State is on our website in our Q&A section already. So go on and, and check out our website. We, can, we have links to the specific applications um, if you're curious. And then additionally, we're seeking growth stage companies with existing post beta technologies. So we don't accept custom built solutions. We're not looking for startups in the ideation phase. Uh, we really want startups that have already seen product market fit and have already been able to test their technologies in another market. Um, and that, you know, working with the transit agencies here in New York, there's demonstrate you can demonstrate your uh, value in your technology and have potential to scale throughout the entire agency. Um, again, subsidiaries of larger companies are not eligible to apply, um, and also you can submit multiple solutions. Each solution should be submitted separately. And then we got a few questions around solution types. For example, you know, what challenges are most important? Is XYZ innovation eligible? So just as mentioned, um, the use cases on our website are examples that transit agencies proposed. However, they are not prescriptive. And the challenges, the two challenges that we listed are the top priorities uh, from each of the transit agencies. And so we encourage entrepreneurs to present innovative out of the box solutions through their application. And so essentially any solution that addresses the challenge statement is eligible to apply as long as you meet all the other eligibility requirements. And then lastly, there's a question around scope of work parameters. You know, what specifically are you looking for in, in a scope? Um, so for the initial proof of concept period, uh, that eight-week proof of concept, we look for small targeted scopes that can be implemented and measured within eight weeks. Um, and then they have the ability to scale up to serve the entire agency if proven. Um, each company has discretion to create an achievable scope of work that they're comfortable taking on. So, you know, it's up, ultimately it's up to you to, to propose a, a scope that you think is manageable based off of your resources um, and what you can take on. All right, so uh, Natalia, are there any additional questions uh, that have come through? Yes, we have uh, questions around uh, electrification and really I think the sustainability challenge. So a few questions and I'll merge them into one. Um, are topics beyond electrification and charging encouraged to apply, for example, water or other zero emissions uh, opportunities? Uh, this might be a question for Sunil. Um, you might need to unmute Sunil. All right. 
Thank you. Uh, just so that I hear the question clearly, uh, you're saying are topics beyond the electrification of buses itself relevant, or are they are they uh, of interest? Are they are they relevant? Are you open to seeing uh, other non-electrification submissions? Right. So I would say absolutely, um, uh, I, and I would bring two examples uh, to uh, to bear upon that. The first is solutions that uh, that can demonstrate. Uh, 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 an effective uh, battery electric uh, or battery storage solutions that can be deployed at our depots using uh, uh, using solar PV solar pho photovoltaics on the roof of the depots. That's something that we are looking at from a resiliency slash redundancy perspective. So, so solutions that are in that space is absolutely uh, uh, welcome. Uh, you know, and that nicely ties into the uh, electrification goals and agenda. Uh, so that's that's one. Uh, the second, uh, you know, uh, piece with respect to zero emissions uh, that I would think is uh, out of the box type ideas where you can potentially use, uh, uh, let's say, traction power uh, to charge our buses. Uh, that's that's something that we can we we are um, uh, open to looking at. Uh, and and another aspect that I would want to say is uh, um, alternative zero emission technologies like. Uh, effective use of hydrogen fuel cells as a way to power our buses uh, is, is, is another uh, uh, place that uh, I would say, um, 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 you know, is relevant to us. So, um, yeah. So other than for smart charging, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of other places that we are looking at, but uh, uh, we wanted to focus this group primarily when it, as, as it applies to, you know, uh, developers starting uh, uh, in the space and, uh, uh, and coming out with innovative solutions and things like that. But there is a whole bunch of uh, opportunities in the zero emission space that we are looking at. Yeah. I Thank you, Sunil. Uh, yeah. Kate, uh, did you also want to share any additional thoughts on that question? Um, might need to unmute Kate. Um, so for us, we haven't zeroed in as electrification as being the primary concern for us. I think in general, we're trying to meet our net zero goals and we have many facilities that need many different um, approaches. So we're really looking for, you know, all of the things that Sunil said, but as well as um, additional uh, ideas that might relate to operations um, that could be applied to say at the, the port or, or, at, or, you know, our path trains or at the airport, anything having to do with, um, you know, optimization of electricity, uh, of, of energy, of storage, alternative fuels, um, you know, we we have been doing a lot with um, monitoring our, our building energy, um, but, you know, seeing how we can utilize that information in a way that can really push us um, and accelerate our progress towards meeting our goals, those are all, um, those would all be welcome. Great, thank you. Okay, great. So I think that is that is most of the questions. Anyone else has any additional questions, you are welcome to send them the, via the chat and um, we will be aggregating those and then uh, responding in the FAQ as Stacey mentioned. And uh, you will get an email once the FAQ has been updated um, with the answers. You're welcome to re reach out if you have any follow-up questions. So I'll turn it back to you, Stacey. Great. Well, Thank you everybody for participating. Um, as Natalia mentioned, uh, we really appreciate your questions and we will be reviewing and answering them and posting them online on our website. Um, we are very excited to welcome you all and encourage you all to apply. So as mentioned, you can go to transitinnovation.org right now, look at the challenges, look at more information, all of the publicly available resources are on our website. Um, and then apply. So please do apply by March 25th. That is the deadline. Um, and as always, you can feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Great. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. And thank you, Kate and Sunil, again, yep. for participating.